Hey, you guys. So I want to talk about Janet Jackson. I know I've got no makeup on today, but I don't feel like it. I want to be just as real as Janet was in this moment. <laughs> now, if you don't know, Janet Jackson recently came out um, and did an interview within which she was asked um, how she felt about potentially having our first alleged Black female president. And Janet said um, that she didn't think she was Black. And that, I mean, what she heard is that, you know, apparently, you know, old girl is not Black. Her dad is white. She's Indian. And um, all that good stuff. Now, I can't sit here and say I know her dad is black or I know her dad is not white, you know, because I don't know this woman. And I mean, like, how much do we really know? Have we seen this, that, and the third? But like, I'm not going to sit here and play games just because Janet said something that made me, you know, feel like, you know, okay, we got to win. You know, I, I'm not going to sit here and act like I don't see Kamala as black. I see her as black. I do. <laughs> I don't know if she sees herself that way, even though she's currently, you know, riding off of that ticket for, you know, all the way to the presidency. But I see her as a black woman. I see her as a biracial black woman, you know. So, I mean, that's just what it is. Not only do I see it that way because I know that to be her, you know, um, demographic background, but... Um, also, just because I'm fairly good with being able to spot blackness in people, and I see it, so stop. But what makes me happy about this is the fact that it is, you know, even though I don't think Janet meant it the way that it, I, I'm taking it, it kind of presents this. It, it, it solidifies this argument that she has not touted her blackness that Kamala has not touted her Blackness throughout her, you know, existence, her political career. And, and so much so that it's an issue for people to even acknowledge her as Black. Like, I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, If Janet Jackson doesn't think that you're Black, if she doesn't know that you're Black, you clearly haven't done enough, a good enough job letting people know that. You know what I'm saying? Like, Janet Jackson don't know me from a can of paint, Adam or Eve, but she would never doubt that you know anything about my blackness. She could look at me and tell that I'm black. And I know not everybody can, you know, is the same way with that. But Kamala is not, you know what I mean? Like she's not, she's not a person who has lived in her blackness. She's running around here talking about how she's washing her greens in, in bathtubs. And like she's some runaway slave or something. I don't even think they did that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even think we did that back then. Did we even have tubs, to be honest with you? Like, <laughs> you want to be real about it. But, you know, uh, she over here talking about, you know, hot sauce on her, whatever, and all this other stuff. Some Hillary shit, you know. I heard Hillary apparently is running too. Like, what? Did Hillary just throw her hat in the ring? This is some real disorganized shit this year. But... You know, you got Biden dropping out last minute. You got, you know, Kamala jumping in last minute. You got, you know, now all of a sudden, it, it, the, the only thing people are talking about is, oh, black, 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 she's black, she's black. And it's like, they want to talk to every black person and ask every black person, how do you feel about this? It's like the Inquisition. It's like, shut the fuck up. Like, I don't care. I don't care. What are the policies? What is she running on? What, I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, does she have a, a, a set of policies yet? Let me go to her website. Finally got a campaign going. So <laughs> I guess we should have that, you know, a month before we're supposed to be expecting to expect it to vote for you. I mean, so congratulations. I guess they just put that up there, like within the past week or two, because like for weeks, months, she has not had a platform to run on. And it was already weird enough that she was coming in so late. But anyway, um, Especially after, like,
dropping out initially. But anyway, so people are off the walls mad. They are mad at Janet Jackson. They're going off on Janet. They've dragged, uh, you know, the late Michael into this, Michael Jackson. Um, I saw one guy on his TikTok, um, some Black dude, talk about some, well, your brother didn't even want to be Black. At least she wants to be Black. So I know that's a cute thing to say. I know that when you're thinking of things of comebacks, you know, you don't really, some people don't like to distinguish between what's real and what's an accusation. But Michael Jackson, if you don't know, since you're not, you know, we're, I just love how we're so mad about Janet not doing her homework, but you're not doing yours. To say that Michael didn't want to be Black when he fought for people to get the rights to their catalogs from Sony and all kinds of shit. Some would argue, many argue, the reason that he was killed. You know what I'm saying? Um, he got his own rights to his music. He got the rights to a whole bunch of other people's music. He gave them the rights to their music after he bought it for them, you know, unbeknownst to them, just for that specific purpose so that we could have more Black people owning the rights to their music. And to address the thing that people like to, to use to claim that he did not you know, appreciate his blackness and that he didn't like revel in his blackness, his skin tone. He had vitiligo. So his skin was turning white. He dyed his skin to make it all the same color because it was all going white. So if you want to be a person running around here with the vitiligo thing going on, most people who have it don't even want to have it going on. So if you want that, and if you feel like that proves your blackness, you know, saying, okay, fuck an even skin tone, I'm just going to keep the black as long as there's even a speck left or whatever. If that's how you want to do it, then that's how you do it. But since you weren't the one cursed with this or blessed with it, you don't get to speak. It's just ridiculous. It's like, I mean, like, what are we talking about? You're, you're shaming someone because they had a genetic disorder? You're shaming him because he had vitiligo and decided that he was just going to go ahead and speed up the process and make it all in his skin the same color that it was becoming. Then people say, oh, well, the wigs. His hair was burned the fuck off in that Pepsi commercial uh, 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 set. On the set of that Pepsi commercial, uh, when the fire hit his, you know, the flames that were coming up inside of him hit his hair. And he ended up burning and getting like, you know, third degree burns and all kinds of shit. His hair was burned off. Then people talk about the plastic surgeries. Well, the only plastic surgery he ever had was his nose and things that, you know, went with that rhinoplasty. And things that went with that rhinoplasty. So, like, I'm not understanding. And that was also because of the surgery or because of the, the accident. So it's just weird to me that you guys are taking something that was a horrible, tragic accident and also genetics that happened to him and using that to say that he didn't want to be Black when that man has made more culturally relevant music about Blackness, has done more for the Black community and gotten us to the point where we would not be today had he not done those things. Michael Jackson humanized the Black community in ways that no one ever would have been able to if he didn't exist. No one would have been able to do what Michael did. And I don't just mean like the performances he gave and things like that. I mean what that provided, what that opened up. The way that Michael showed that Black people can be talented, can be beautiful, can be sexy, can be intelligent, can be artistic and creative. The way that he showed human, all of these things that we can do, be capable of, um, humanitarian, Earth Song, one of my favorite, I think it is my favorite song by him, Earth Song. Like the way that he showed all of those things, his performance ability, uh, you know what I'm saying, his endurance, 
No one else has been able to do that. I know you guys keep trying to give it to Chris Brown. He's not it. And Chris Brown is amazing. And I and Chris Brown doesn't even want to be compared to Michael. So y'all need to stop doing him like that. You're doing him dirty. <laughs> When your friends put you up to some shit that you know you ain't qualified for and they keep doing that shit, like, stop. You're making us all look like fools. But um, you guys keep trying to give it to everybody else. You guys keep trying to give it to everybody else. Michael is that, is that dude. He's that dude. So it's just ridiculous to, like, see people out here always so ready to bash that man and it's all jealousy it's the reason that they can't let his name just stay out of their mouths like they're always comparing someone to michael jackson they're always this that if the man was so horrible if he was so this that and the third why are you comparing yourselves to him why do you keep bringing him up the man's been dead for a long time (sighs) ridiculous So people are mad. People are really mad. And, you know, it's just really, um, I will admit that it is very, as cool as it was to see, you know, to hear Janet say this at, at the same time, it is so unfortunate to see how they're doing her in her later years, because this is a woman who already had her career ruined by white man who sexually assaulted her on stage in front of everybody and they blamed the woman as usual. But here we are. And if you want to know more about that and like what I feel about that, I made um, an earlier episode through this podcast, Lynn's Ben's. Um, but it's through the podcast, so if you're watching through YouTube, um, you'll have to um, find Lynn Spins, the podcast, and then look for, like, through Spotify or something, and then look for Conserving an Idol. Um, um, and it's about Britney Spears. And it goes into Justin Timberlake a little bit and uh, what he did to her and what he did to Janet. But the short version I have never liked Justin Timberlake ever since I discovered that that situation happened. And I was a kid when it happened, so I didn't really know. I didn't really know what happened until I got became an adult. And it always, I always wondered, where is Janet Jackson? Like, why did her career just seem to stop out of nowhere? And um, it was so disappointing when I found out what it was. And um, but yeah, long story short, I don't like Justin Timberlake. Um, my opinion is that he, to, to my knowledge, it seems that it was not planned. Um, I, I have seen nothing that has um, had Janet admitting that she planned that and that she was suppo- that he was supposed to pull her boob out or rip something off so that her boob was exposed. I don't, I have not seen anything about that. So if you want to send me something or direct me somewhere, Go ahead and do it. I'll learn the truth. But um, even if that was the case and he didn't violate her in that moment without her consent, at the end of the day, why is she the one who went down? Why did his career take off at the same time that hers went away, was taken away? So... You know, just ridiculous. But they're basically trying to do her like they did her back then. And bitches are clowning her. The Black community is clowning her. And it's just so funny because it's just like, y'all will clown anybody. You will clown anybody. Like, y'all really going to clown our Black royalty. Fully Black, mind you. You're going to clown our Black royalty for some biracial chick who doesn't even want to give us reparations who does not believe in the American. She is so black, foundational Black American that she doesn't even believe in reparations. This is a woman who's a part of the same administration who gave reparate, that gave reparations to the Asian community for COVID when they didn't even ask for reparations for COVID. Who even thought that they would get reparations for COVID? Like last time I checked, didn't, didn't it start in Wuhan, China? 
I'm not, I'm not understand. I know that's, you know, something that people don't want people to say, but like, it's not racist for me to say where we know to, it to have originated. The virus allegedly originated in Wuhan. And there is, um, there are, there was a 60, um, 60 minute or 60 second documentary that I watched. I think it's called 60 Minutes. Um, Australia uh, that went into, it had like Chinese representatives of the government, uh, Australian, American, who representatives, you know, World Health Organization. Um, and it was getting into it and they um, discussed how it originated in Wuhan and how it um um, was apparently not too far from a facility that was testing. Um, um, or excuse me, apparently uh, there is a facility not too far from where it allegedly originated in a food market, a wild food market in Wuhan. Um, not too far from there, there is a a clinic or a um, study site, a research site, um, a lab, if you will, where um, they were apparently testing bats with the disease, with the virus. And they were, you know, basically trying to make it evolve in bats, allegedly, something like that. But you have to look into it. Just look up COVID 60 second, 60 minute documentary or whatever. Um, and honestly, if you look up like COVID or origins, you should be able to come up with this. But it's just crazy because it's just like, the black community has been going hard for reparations for decades, for decades, <laughs> since the Sherman order. And was it General Sherman, General William Sherman? I believe. And they keep telling us about a study. Even Kamala or Kamala just uh, finally agreed to a study after saying that she was never going to even consider it. But you all just gave reparations away to, to Asian people. This is the thing we be talking about when we say that anti Blackness is present in everything. When we say racism, race is involved and race has to do with everything. You know what I'm saying? When we say these things, this is what we mean, you know? Like, you can't just sit here and like, you, I mean, it's just, weird. it's just ridiculous. Like, you, you can't just sit here and completely deny one person over and over and over again and then give all of this to other another person willingly without them even having to ask for it and then not expect people to see the favoritism going on in that situation that's what's happening with the black race we are consistently passed up and there are excuses made for why we can't ever get what native americans got what japanese americans got what uh, chinese americans got individually what asian americans got as a whole you know uh, federally and statewide you know <laughs> and then this this witch over here what's her name let me look her up real quick um she made a video about the situation and she was mad she i think she i i don't recall did she give grace to janet i don't recall but uh because one of the videos i just watched two videos back to back and one of them um did not give her any grace whatsoever but um or excuse me one of them went out of their way to give her grace and then the other one it wasn't so much um this one is on a channel titled tammy talks and it reads, Janet Jackson claims Kamala uh, or Kamala isn't black. Uh, Dolly Parton, Dolly Parton on Bay's uh, CMA snub, Eve's call from Jay Z. And I want to get into that Dolly Parton situation as well. Um, I think I'll go ahead and do that in this video. Um, but she ends. I didn't even watch her video because um, once I started hearing. 
the way that she was like, you know, referring to Janet and like the way she was reading the situation, I was like, mm, okay, we probably don't have the same take. But I love the comment. <laughs> but I love the comment. And it reads, I'm so glad Janet said that ish. Within no time, she responded, blocked with the peace sign. I, I don't know if this is the first video I've seen in her of hers, but like, I think it is. The name seems a little familiar, but I think it is. Um, really? You just blocked me because I had a different opinion because I'm glad that she said that. So I didn't even voice my own opinion. All I did was support our greats. You know what I'm saying? One of our greats. And you blocked me because of that? Like, really? That's trash. <laughs> Not that your content seems to be something that's pulling me in anyway, but like... I, I, there's just so much wrong with that. Like, number one, me agreeing with Janet Jackson should not be a reason for you to block me. You ain't black if you're doing shit like that. Like, to be honest, I don't know about Kamala, but you ain't, you know what I'm saying? But on top of that, it's like, you blocked me for Kamala, Kamala, whatever her name is. That's who you're blocking me for. Girl, please. Are we serious? And it's so funny because it's like, people like me, are going to school to get their Juris Doctor, you know, their GD to practice law so that they can bring about reparations for the foundational Black American community, of which I believe she's a part, this Tammy speaks. But you're blocking me and you're mad because of things like what Janet Jackson said that I agreed with. Like, stop, stop. Because I'm the type of person who's actually going to fight for you, my people, people I claim. You know what I'm saying? Kamala, don't claim you until it's beneficial. And you all go with this. And I'm having a very hard time with a lot of you. Because the Kunishan is coming out. It's coming out. It's coming out. Like, I mean, a lot of y'all are of Kunishan descent. I thought you were Black. Turns out you're Black. You're just a different ethnicity. Kunishan. Whoever needs to hear this, be cool or come out of bag. I really don't care. Stop. Stop it, you guys. Like, this is not okay. This is not okay. You're voting for someone because you're doing Obama all over again. You're voting for someone because they're black. That's it. That's it. Do you know how many black people we have in power right now? Clarence Thomas, who are not a great choice at all, even over most white people. You can't keep voting for someone because they put, can't keep going for the shiny thing they keep dangling in your face. Gosh. Does anybody know about Alex? Does anybody know about Alexandria Casio Cortez? Does anybody know about? Claudia de la Cruz. Anybody in her running mate? I believe her name's Katrina. D does anyone know about her? A black uh, Latin woman who is uh, running for president um, uh, on a platform for reparations for the black community uh, for um, um, in, uh, a socialist movement, uh, equality, excuse me, healthcare for all, um, um, taking down big corporations and big business and distributing uh, distributing that money to uh, the working class. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. Like women's rights, stopping the, the uh, genocide in Gaza that so many Democrats seem to have forgotten about. Yeah. So it's just weird because it's just like, I mean, is, is anybody know about Jill Stein? Anybody know about anything going on with her platform? That she's also for reparations and not just a study? Um, 
And she's white and she's Jewish. And she's also for ending the genocide in Palestine. So I just don't understand a lot of you because you keep talking this talk like you're really doing something. And it's like, you're not doing anything but what white people tell you to do. White people come down and put a little bug in your ear and you hoes are moving like fucking Frankenstein. And I mean, doing exactly what they want you to do. And it's just crazy to me because it's just like, do we not know how this ends? Like we do this all the time. Why are you playing into this two-party system? Why are you only acknowledging, you know, um, uh, the, the options that they're dangling in front of you, Trump or Kamala? Like, why? Jill Stein has been in this. Claudia has been in this. So, I mean, it's just, it's so weird. It's just so weird. It's just like, and then people say, oh, well, they're not going to win. Yeah, because you all do stuff like this. For years, I've been talking about, even since the last, before the last election, even since years before that, I have been trying to, you know, um, gin up steam for third party options, basically. Other people who are, not being considered, you know, third ticket options. And it's a very lonely road out here. It's, it's a lonely, arduous trek because most people do not care to do that. They'll just stick with the two main ones. And it's like, that's why we keep ending up. It, it's, let, just think about this. If the establishment knows that you're only going to pick from the two main choices that they present to you, then why would they ever present you anything further to the left or further to the right than already is present, you know? Why would not Why would they not just continue this same cyclical Republican-Democratic situation, uh, but it's all elite? You know what I'm saying? To the end of time. Why not? It doesn't make any sense. So, I don't know. I just need you guys to do some research a little bit like if you're not going to vote in your local elections or you know anything else at the very least if you're going to vote for the president can you like know everybody who's running can you like look up who go google like who's running for president and do a little research on them at least know what their policies are so that you can make a somewhat informed decision because when you get there and you see five other names on the ballot that you didn't even know were running, you know? That's intentional. It's intentional. They don't want you to think about those other options. I mean, think about it. How long have we been moving in the same direction so slowly? Do you think that that has anything to do with the fact that we're still voting for the same two main options that they tell us about? Does anybody find it weird that they don't talk about the other options? Because that's why you don't know about them. That's why they are not worth talking about them, talking about because they're not talked about. So nobody knows about them. And they keep them from getting on these major platforms. The major news doesn't want to talk to them, doesn't allow them a platform. Uh, the debate stages don't allow them to debate. Why was Jill Stein not debating Donald Trump and Kamala Harris? Why was uh, Claudia not? Why do you guys not even know who I'm talking about when I say Claudia de la Cruz? Look up her uh, movement, her presidential bid and campaign. So it is what it is. But hey, I'm Lynn Ferguson, also known as Lynn Tennyson, your host here on the show. And I welcome you next time we jump in. Lynn's Vince. <laughs>